Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, here to the PPL. My name is Rain Day. That's pretty hair. And, uh, you know, as the old saying goes, five, four, two, one. It's time to get started here for our final set of the day. Way to just scramble my brain right before we get going. <laughs> Can you not, Evan? God. I had everything planned out, and now... Now I don't know. Now I don't I know. I don't know what you're going to get. Well, it's going to be a great set, I think. Uh, Not as sincere and Ninjas in Pajamas. These two organizations have been competing against each other in various games, various platforms for various years. But now in Paladins, it's finally time where they've turned into the, uh, I think, most important adversaries yeah. in all of Europe. Definitely. And this is a squad that, you know, has been on the come up, right? They NIP had their moment in the sun. They were top two for a long time. It's been a long road back to the top two. But they're here now, and we'll have to see if to how high they can fly. I think this is a really smart band from Na'Vi, the Frozen Guard. It's been paying dividends for both Nip and for VP and IP. Get rid of the Ascension Peak, where Na'Vi started to bring out a little triple front line action. Stonekeep, I don't know who's the best team on Stonekeep anymore these days because there's so many players that used to be so good here that they've all gone on They've had moments different for teams now. Well, I think Na'Vi are pretty dang good, and it is Na'Vi's pick, so let's give them the credit. I think the Inara is setting up for uh, what will be a pretty consistent style of play for them with flexibility all aboard. But NIP, they're really good at figuring out how to deal with drafts. So I'm going to give them the credit as well. They will have something up in their sleeves. I just don't know if it's going to be enough. Man, they always just grab it. They grab that first pick Inara, and you would think that that leads to just predictability weakness, but they just keep on doing it. Somebody figure out how to beat them with it. Because I'm getting sick of seeing the same thing and the same victory. <laughs> but Na'Vi, if, if it ain't broke. Well, you know, you, you do say that, yeah, there's there's some moments where you could plan out and, and take advantage of it. And, you know, noticeably, no Androx is picked and no Torvald as well, which seems like that would be a really dangerous pairing coming up. Guy who's normally sitting in the band phase. And there it is. There's the Torvald. So the Barrack Torvald here with the Ying. And this opens things up, but Na'Vi have the chance now to scoop up the Nando. Uh, sorry, the Androxes if they want them. Sometimes that that don't happen in these these real big heavyweight matchups. Nah. Shaw hovered here in game number I'm one. I'm getting debated. I'm getting debated. Are you? I said this on desk. Oh! I'm just a god! <laughs> I'm just a god! I thought I was getting debated. Shaw fifth here, and it'll be Willow tenth for NIP. This is great. This is great. Well, I'm really glad to see him, and I think the recurve uh, is is what we will expect. But our first Shaolin, ladies and gentlemen, give it up. We knew that this this team, these sets, could have their the first Shaolin come up because you see Bonker, you see Creatives, you just say, man, these are Shaolin guys through and through. But who do you think is going to win? Will you vote with the Desert Wind, or will you think he's more of a Desert Breeze? Give it over to Willow of the Summer Court. Who do you think's playing it? Creatives. It's been so long. Creatives is a shallow guy. Mutu can play it, but I would definitely vote on... Uh, my mind would be Creatives would, would grab that one. Well, let's get into it. I mean, he scales super well with Wrecker here, so just after the Wrecker one purchase. Ooh! A swap up. Halfway right. No, I was fully right. This is just another test. This is another test. I was just wrong. You're getting debated by production. I yeah. was wrong on this test, yeah. <laughs> they, they changed his name. <laughs> they changed his name so you wouldn't be right. Explosive Arrow, we'll talk a little bit about it and take a look at his loadout here as he loads in. So every time he launches one of those bad boys, it can no longer stun, but it does explode in an area around the target. You can see he's prioritized CDR around this ability specifically. Allows him to just be that much more lethal while poking. He's going for a very, very scenic route flank here. Oh, it's going to work, too. Draws off the high oh! ground. Misses the initial shot. Hits the harder shots in that combo. And first blood will go to NIP as a result. It's kind of enough, though, right? I mean, at this point, it is totally enough. Dot running bullseye, so you'll notice that he still doesn't have his withdraw. He's used his shimmer reset. That's 30 seconds before that's available. And he's just diving. This is this is on purpose. Not a sincere loss, one or two. He's just saying, I'm in a bad spot. Let's just all reset, get as much damage as we can. Now NIP in full control. Climbing up now, just tying Navi. This is what always happens with this NR. They always get that 30 to 50% on the objective, even if they lose the fight. Fairly close vote in the chat here as well. 59 to 41% in favor of the World Championship. Squad here, Navi. Bonker on the high ground here, but he is being encroached upon. Creatives poke to half health. Bonker might just say, may I have this dance? Slides back in wow. and does not land the presence. Gets a Yin clone there. Bonker almost with the fancy footwork 
on Ooh. the MVP. Would have been a highlight, but now he's put himself in a pickle here. He is on the low ground, but look at that Koa grabbing so much attention. And that's going to open things up for Bonkers. Got to hit it. Hits it. Creative's there. Dead. Spunky Damn. in the dirt. Bonkers showing up big. And he says, take the Shaolin, but you can't take the Shaolin out the player. He goes ahead and now finds Mutu and says, give me that champion. So we talked about what is a, what is a bad day for Na'Vi look like so far. 0-2. That's Mutu right now. Bringing yep. out the wind. Bonker looking very dialed in. He missed one ability in that entire. I mean, granted, that's not saying a lot with Leon. It's the only ability that you can miss outside of your ult. But he misses uh, only one thing really there down the stretch. Bonker looking very, very dialed in. Yeah, I mean, if you would have hit that presence, he goes for it. It's more of a highlight reel rather than uh, what you expect to grab. And that's the thing with Leon. You can kind of hit your presence or not, and it's almost like gravy if you hit it. And you're okay if you don't. You're not really necessarily counting on that, but. That's the separation between some of these best performances that we've seen. And Koa doing all the dirty work like we mentioned. And he's been continuing that on this barrack here on the front line. And Phoenix on Fernando, not exactly a commonality thing. He normally floats around the ruckus, the ash, when it's time to play front line. Yep. Maybe even the con, but not today. I wonder if that has anything to do with Na'Vi looking a little sluggish out of the gate. I think it's good bans. I think leaving the con open is something we've often seen, and they'll get that as a secondary pick. Uh, but you know what's great is that they, they take the Torvald and Phoenix. I mean, Torvald, that is something he has not really brought out, and I don't think that's part of his play style. It's a little bit too subsidiary for the way that he likes to operate as the main man in charge of attracting the attention. But Kruntzi fits right in. He's had a game with this earlier in last week, I believe, that was really, really nice. And now Creative's finding Koa. It's going to be a stall out here for NIP. Not as sincere on the defense, pushing them back halfway. It definitely doesn't feel like Na'Vi have the roster to run the Tor Vault. Phoenix is almost always the most aggressive front line. And unless it was like a Creative's flexing onto it, I, I just don't see it. Oh, man. Big, big plays from Diggy Dog here. Kronzi just keeping him nice and healthy, making sure he's got Koa, who's getting a little overextended, but with a Torvald bubble. Overextended takes on a new meaning. Three seconds there stay for safety, and he's looking for the projectiles to keep finding Phoenix, and he just wants to stay out of line of sight. He knows Mutu's around. Hyper Beam here from Kronzi, but Lazy is still alive. A double Ooh. kill from a new blood, sending <laughs> Na'Vi into the sky, and that's an IP with a 2-0 and a little bit of dance. Go ahead, show him the fancy foot work old man on their map pick as well what a start for nip diggy dog it's a sneaky double kill here out of the gate and what is always so, so hard about stone keep is finding that when the payload is right where it was finding that pick but navi get a little confident they come out of their base they come out of the castle and that's where the ninjas are able to strike out of the castle into the alligator mode Point spawning in 15. that's sure. one that we don't usually say but you know it definitely applies Especially on Stone Keep. Has a little bit of, uh, I guess, less of a ring to it. Five, but it's it's going to be there, guys. Trust me. It's alligator or crocodiles two, in the realm? <clears throat> or just a bunch of whatever the turtles. Whatever the dude from Peter Pan was dealing with. That was a crocodile. Those are the bigger ones. Mm. Alligators, the babies. Those aren't the ones you're scared of. I feel like there definitely should be some type of like moat kill volume to, to throw people into on Stone Ab Keep. Absolutely. That seems like like the smartest thing in the world. Just defensively, you know, when you're talking about just setting up a castle that's strong. But look at that. All the damage in the world and all the possession in the world. Couldn't possess Spunky to stay alive with Diggy Dog just looking at him. Spunky's like, I got a cactus on my head, man. I got way too many things to be doing right now. I cannot deal with you and your fairy Come buddy. on, Diggy! Triple kill for the man from Australia. Hey, Quadra. Ooh, we. He's popping off. The Thunder Boys, he's bringing it. 16 streak. What is happening to Na'Vi right now on their map pick? Ninjas in pajamas, giving them the business. We talked about their, we definitely expected some flexibility, some changes. Na'Vi are confirmed for HRX. Win or lose here today, it's really just pride. It doesn't mean super much for them, so I don't know. This could be... We don't really care. We can brush this one off as a little bit easier because we are still the top seed. And man, I hate seeing this shot land now because it's looking really Overtime. weak. You know, unfortunately here for Mutu and the rest of the boys. But lazy on the objective. You never know. That's a nice explosive arrow usage. If he gets diggy, that's it. Oh my god! When you think you got him, then Bonker comes along. But creatives, lazy, Phoenix, they're here. Don't count them out. They're world champs for a reason. They bounce back, ladies and gentlemen. It's still a game here on Stone Keep. Took a lot of ultimates there for Na'Vi. They do indeed get it done. Let's take a look at the damage charts and these KDs and 
dissect this Shaolin's performance just a little bit. He's sitting in the middle of the pack so far. Phoenix leading Navi in damage on Fernando. Never what you want to see. Three and eight, two and six for the back line of the World Championship squad at the moment. It's just so much momentum. Diggy, I don't know what the hell you're doing there. Yeah. I was about to say 12 and one goes to 13 and two. He trades, but not for much. Well, you know, you, you look at this this Torval bubble and what it's actually bringing. It's 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 really giving Diggy Dog about a thousand uh, a thousand damage essentially, a little a little bit higher than that, about a thousand forty on his Nightshade, which is one of the bigger bigger kind of burst options that he's having. So he's just getting this incredible Ooh. amount of burst, but then he's also hitting for six fifty on his basic attacks, which is. 150 more than what he's used to, and this just means that these matchups, all of the things that creatives and all these guys know, especially with Torvald banned in, like all the time, is totally thrown off. So Navi, you got to give him a round or two to really adjust against the threat that is Diggy Dog with Cruncy supporting him. Torvald never a, a super mainstay in the meta either, so he is something you have to get used to again. You haven't seen something for a while, and if Shaolin was succeeding, we would be talking about this for him. But I guess easy come, easy go for the surprise factor. Everyone just needs to remember how to play. And a, and a big part about playing against Shaolin back in the day wasn't really explosive arrow. Desert no. Shadow has been uh, the more prime selection for him in his days. Brought low yet again here. Can only really make those stealth plays with wow. his ultimate now, and his ultimate's since been nerfed. Getting a ton of damage up into this little corridor here, but still no kills. I mean, he's there real min-maxing it right now. Shaolin with an explosive entrance finds Koa. Diggy Dog falls as well. Phoenix is doing work on the right side. It's not Bonker sliding in, but nah, I don't think that's going to work. Mutu does the hop thing. It's good to be able to say that again. Double kill from Mutu. Just as NIP looks solid, not as Vincere clapping back. Do they even have an answer for this? Barrack should be able to contest slightly from the top, but he's going to drop down, throw out the dome shield. Heat Haze is ready to go. Is that enough to deter? Navi, the wall goes up. Lazy's still hanging out nearby. He's going to get the overtime started. Phoenix doing his thing up here in the back line, trying to pressure people out. Diggy finds the first kill. Mutu trades it back. Oof. Will he be the next to claim? Diggy does lose his life two for two when it's all said and done. It's frontliners and supports duking it out. I I think this is going to be a problem. Cruncy goes uh, into the hyper beam here, but that, I don't even son. think that it's going to get the job done. Lazy is still alive, and Cruncy now looks to fall. Death in taxes. It only means so much with Spunky still throwing the gourd out and earthing guard for Inara. Lazy here is getting low, but there's the wall, and it forces Perdo in an aggressive situation. Now it means creatives and Mutsu can look at him, but they're not going to. And that means that Nadis Vincir can't push. NIP, 3-1, to one, game point coming up. <laughs> you did it again. What? The Perdo thing. Oh, did I really? <laughs> did I say Perdo? He <laughs> did. Oh my god. I see what it is now. That's funny. That's hilarious. 16 streak for Diggy though. I mean, what an absolute mammoth in the first round or the first two rounds here. 18 and 5 with I mean, if this game goes another 8 10 minutes, you're going to be looking at one hell of a slash line here for a PPL game. 82k sitting almost about 20,000 above the next closest who is Bonker and the type of performance he's having. It's definitely incredible as well. Nine and six. Ain't the prettiest slash line at the ball, but he has certainly looked good on Leon. And Mutu's starting to pick up. I mean, you look at three and seven, but now you talk about... Uh, I think Man, they just all in blast shields there. They're not worried about seven. anything else. No, I mean, that's really what they're looking to win. And I think Phoenix has to be careful here. This is not something you could just easily run away. You're going to force your immortal, especially since he's built Wrecker in. It's 1,025, but he gets the full heal, and that is something he wasn't counting on. Now Phoenix wins that, and they're forcing a little bit of help from their friends on the Yang, and now Phoenix forced to give up the high ground. Spunky in trouble. The Slither is there. Diggy Dog now goes back to the objective. Was this good time used? Because Na'Vi, no. they have 78% on the point. <laughs> they're dragging their feet, man. They are not getting done what they need to be getting done here. NIP have taken too long. 93% on the objective. Finally, the kill's Ooh. coming through, but it's a three for one in favor of Na'Vi. Four for one. And once Diggy's dead, they'll make it a five for two. The Australian finding a way to trade it out. Na'Vi back on their feet. I think the big, the big crucial moment there is the Fey Flight popped, whether or not. Diggy Dog pushes that kill onto Phoenix. Granted, we have all the info on Spectator. We knew where all of the backliners were for Navi, the people that were a threat to him in the air. It could have been a move. If, I think if he pushed him, he still had his dead zone lingering on that target. Fernando was under half. He could have killed Phoenix there and probably pushed down Spunky as well. Creatives now with a little bit of freedom to operate. And looking to just finish off Cruncy. Needs to hit these shots. Patience in the way he's aiming. Not really moving his targeter much. Just 
letting Cruncy do the work for him. Now Diggy Dog rolls in. This is a pretty all-in play. He uses Flutter oh. Seedling, not going to kill him. Spunky right where you need him. He's the two-time world champ for a reason. And on the support, keeping everyone healthy. Lazy Phoenix doing the job of a support. See you later, oh. Lazy. Gets the, the final kill, but Creative sends Bird off the map. The disrespect, dude. I mean, just the no-look disengage. Get out of my map here, boy. This is my stone keep. Oh, my goodness. Lazy. Very aggressive. Playing on the pillar here. Trying to do Phoenix's job. Forcing everyone back into spawn. 120 on the clock, but Na'Vi may not need it all. If they can take down this little barrack here, that's all that stands between them and conversion. Down he goes. And now the Clown Fiesta must begin just to keep this contested. And their big problem was last round they used a lot of ultimates, and so they put themselves up in a, co in a comeback mechanic type situation with no ults to be able to contest an Anara on the objective, and it just was not enough time for them to be able to control the high ground. And I think now the smarter thing would just be to contest, get your credits, get your damage, see what you can do, but don't invest any ultimates. Take the tie, go into the next round, and understand that you have a chance to win. But here they go. The defensive response is know, there. Just it's... need Diggy Dog to hit some big burst damage on the Lazy. Okay. He gets one here. Seedling's going to put some damage down on a Lazy. Bonker will find it. And is this stabilization? I don't believe it. I was ready to just say, just give it up. I mean, you're just feeding kills at this point. But NIP pulled that one out of their own cold dead hands. And they bounce back. Good old defender's advantage. And that's the blaster thing, right? That AOE right by the payload, if you're standing there, once a blaster gets involved, like you get a Drogos back online or you get a Willow back online and they have no one shooting at them, that's just a dead anybody standing there. So that was what they were biding their time for. It ended up working out. And all the power to NIP. I just think now you're in the situation where they're back. Do you bet your ults? He's in a spot here for sure. I mean, this is pressure. On the butterfly, Lazy just manages to survive, but Diggy Dog will drop down and try and follow him. Cruncy, he's keeping his head on his shoulders. That's what I like. You could have pushed creatives there, yeah. but he turns back to the objective to make sure everything's okay yep. with the grand scope of the game. A couple of these rookies, man, Ninu for sure. And then K Cruncy performing very, very well and very, very smart for the amount of time that they've had in the league. Lazy has to get that final little stone <laughs> pellet. He had to even up that slash line. He had to even up that slash line. You know what I'm saying? Lazy's like, I can't, I can't be looking bad on cast. 9-9 nine, nine, and 17 for this Degala main. 27-8 and eight for Diggy Dog, and this game is not That's over. That's crazy. Heck of amount of killing blows there. I mean, he's just keeping it up. He's just keeping pace with this blistering start that he had. It's wild to see. Creative still struggling at 6-12. and 12, Three, But two, you got to remember that it's one. so much burst damage from Nightshade, Willow, Diggy Dog. Clearly getting the better end of the stake here. And win or lose, I just wonder if we'll see the Torvald ban. I wonder. They wanted the Inara so badly. And NIP hedged their bets. It ended up working out. There's the Illusory Rift as well. Bird pops that one. Lazy just wants to sit on this objective. He's got a lesser form of combat mechanic. And Diggy Dog this time gets aggressive. And now Lazy has to get off the objective. Phoenix jumps in for him. And there's the Immortal. Lazy is low. But look at that. The ceiling is most likely going to clean it up. Diggy can't find the final blow. Spunky is there in time. It's a full oh, heal. Oh, oh, oh. But Spunky may pay the price as a result unless Creatives pulls one out of that. Bonkers got the enlightenment, but he doesn't. What, did he use it? Oh, my God. I think he did. And just maybe have whiffed in the chaos. Wow. Navi. They weather the storm. Oh, my God. What an incredible team fight. What an incredible life lived by Phoenix. I don't know how he made it out of there. That little shot that Diggy was just a little bit off the mark. Only did 150 damage. He probably needed to do 151 to claim Phoenix's life. And that's why you can make the argument for Cauterize still on Willow's basic attacks. Because moments like that, they're not across the goal game. But the, the moment that might win you the game when you need 90% anti-heal... It doesn't come through. And that would have maybe been the difference. I don't think he can get that full heal that far if that shot is cauterized. And the dead zone used for the damage earlier on before the Immortal, before the CC. And that that's all the difference. Yeah, I mean, I don't play a ton of Willow, so I don't have a, a strong opinion on what you should do. But when you look at the way that Nightshade's being used for Burst and the fact that it's like an 18-second cooldown, I mean, you have to imagine that there are a lot of points that you just wish that you had that anti Some kind, yeah. And then I'm sure there are points where you wish you had record too, but it's just about which ones you want more. And the battle, you know, the concept is, right? I mean, it's a minute and 30 going by. It looks like this could be it for NIP. As Navi are on the push. They brought this back from the brink of death. 
is that, you know, with Drogos and, Bom and Bomb King, you know, traditional blast, you don't need it. I mean, you're hitting it for 850, you're hitting for 1,000, you don't really need it. You just it. kill them so yeah, fast. Yeah, you burst them so fast, <laughs> that doesn't matter. You got so much damage to cover your lack of anti-heal, because they can't heal it up fast enough. But Willow's shooting for 500. That's not nearly enough. So you do you do open yourself up to those moments. Cruncy, I feel like, has to spot out Lazy, but he does it actually. Lazy in a very interesting Lazy spot. Lazy has been so sneaky on the Sonar. It's kind of funny. <laughs> I mean, he was up on the railing, hiding behind a pillar. He's doing a bunch of corny stuff on Anara that you don't typically see just because positioning is so important. She has no way to close a uh -oh. gap. Uh-oh. So where you start a fight can often have a big impact on where you finish it. Phoenix pushing down Diggy Dog. Does he swap the fly out of the sky here? Bubbles a plenty to keep the man healthy. And look but at this. Phoenix will just not quit, and he can't get it done. Uh, really nice stuff from Cruncy Man. Diggy Dog and him play this angle so well. Oh and look my at Korea. god. His triple kill. So frustrating. We're seeing so many min max moments between these teams, and man, they're both looking like world championship contenders Ooh. here, Nick. They are just throwing haymakers, but in this tactical way that makes you see the finesse with which they brought to their Paladins gameplay over the course of this year. It's phenomenal Paladins. You know, Diggy doing a good amount of just in-game leading, drafting, all that all that stuff for Kanga. But at the end of the day, I can tell he's sitting at his computer with his little look that he does, looking through his eyebrows, just completely tunneled on his one objective, and that's to slay Na'Vi. And that is really, I think, where he best fits. And that's what you want from a guy like this. You know he's got the skills to Look do it. Look at this man go, dude. He's just ready to hit it. Even delays Torvald's the shot. Band. And Torvald's there is band, no dude. way they're going to let this happen again. But you know what? Lazy, he realizes that, by the way, my whole team is dead in the back line. Nine streak. Can we take a look at these KDAs? I mean, it's 30. Because it's disgusting. 35 at this point? I mean, you started, what, 28 or 27? 28. And we saw almost a quadra kill. He just pulled at least three more. We He's got coming another round to go. I think at least 35. I don't know what the record is, but I would wager that somewhere around 40 is damn close. Diggy Dog with almost back-to-back -back quadras in a game like this. 36. He's, I mean, he's going to do it for the culture here. He's going to do it for the fairy culture. He's going to do it for the summer court. Now, let's take a look at the loadout because I'm sure everyone on this is like, oh, my God, Diggy Dog, best Willow. And you, you could believe it. You could say it. Twilight 4, Just Believe 4, Sprite Fly 5. Flora and Hummingbird in there. I like Hummingbird as well. You get that flutter, which you get off your cooldown of the resets of Just Believe. You get that ammo every single time you're doing it. It works for me. Ooh, Diggy Dog with a nice little right left. Wow. Look at the speed that he's just attacking this round with. Oh my god, but they just attacked right back. What a beautiful Dread Serpent there. Spunky recognizes the threats, but guess what? Koa gets on the objective, but he, he goes away from it. He doesn't take that maybe 2 3% that might have made the difference later on. And now Lazy is back on it. He's got a sure footing, and it means that the Dome Shield is no longer used. Oh, beautiful oh, stun oh. there. Support me, support crime. Slithers away, and it's an all-dead NIP. You know? Back to base. If I, it, He narrowly missed the mark, but if Diggy Dog got his Fae Flight off there and got that CC immunity, doesn't die to that Dread Serpent, Dread Serpent gets nothing. He tries to go for like a, I don't know, a cheeky start up there. You could hear the line, but he didn't get the ultimate off. And Their just team. a very, very sad team fight in the final round here. Wow. Diggy Dog will not break 48 killing blows. Won't get a single one. And again, I gotta stress, if he gets that Fae Flight off, he becomes CC immune. That Dread Serpent does nothing. That's one a more shot. Very, he's dead. very different fight. Yeah, I think that was just, uh, you know, you challenged the wrong guy. And I think that's, if it's a Yang, totally different story. But because Spunky has the turnaround potential of what Maldama can do, there's there's literally nothing. You know, you're countering that aggression with a lot of healing. Oh, well, Diggy Dog, then he wins the game. But it's uh, incredible for him. 171,000 NIP were so close. But this is what they wanted. This is what they wanted to show the world themselves that at the doorstep with HRX right around the corner, we are able to compete with the best of the best. We are going for a world championship and nothing less this year. Shout out to the amount of bonker damage was able to come out as well without kind of getting all of the bubbles that game. As well as the fact, shout outs to Spunky. I mean, he saved that fight for them. That Dread Serpent was critical. And then he hits a juicy stun on the bird as well, putting a good little bit of damage out there as well. That is what a world championship two time looks like. Potentially three time here. And if you were a betting man, you would say it would be. <laughs> I think that's the moment where they're like, we're banning Torvald. Yeah. When three people are just like, uh, trying to finish that kill and they just can't get it done. That's the moment where you get pissed off at that pick. I think you have to look at Europe's history with Makoa being the reason why 
you know, there is a possibility that he does get banned, sure, but he also might make it through again because you're really having to decide who do you give up. And on Jaguar Falls, Androxus becomes more of a threat, and you have players on both mm. sides that are absolutely disgusting with it. You Drogo's ban, you Willow ban, there's not enough space to ban everybody here. So we're looking at the front lines that are going to be open here. It's going to be Inara, Torvald, or Khan, or both, or all three. I think they're not. <laughs> I think they're going to ban like Andro or something. Oh, they'll ban the Torvald. There it is, Navi. They ban the entirety hmm. of the pair. That <laughs> I wonder what like. they got frustrated with. <laughs> they got the entirety of the pair that they didn't like, and now Ruck is available. But Khan and Nara here for Navi. I like this because it feels like NIP have a strategy. They're like, we're going to let them get an on. We're going to let them do their thing. We're going to keep them in this box. Uh, admittedly, it's, you know, titanium reinforced world championship box. box. We know what it is. We yeah. know what's inside of it. And we need to work around that. And the Barrack Ruckus and Ying, a pairing that we've seen come up more and more and more again. The Leon now taken for the side of Navi, which shuts Ying down pretty well. And again, that turnaround potential now even better. You got the Dread Serpent, but then you also have him paired with the Swift Spirits, giving that to Inara, who really only lacks the mobility. And now she doesn't. Good lineup here from Navi, but the Tyra seems like what they were positioning for, Nick. Now, Bonkers had success on this before, for sure. There is a lot of damage on NIP, and they will go for the triple front line. So probably Diggy on the Tyra in that case. And uh, we'll Navi have to see Ash. how it works out for NIP. I mean, Navi started to do this, Ooh. started to bring this out a couple of opponents. Not afraid to go to the Vivian and just shred those shields. I don't know if NIP accounted for the Vivian, to be honest with you. Um, and I think the Vivian will just absolutely dominate this composition. There's so much shielding, and there is not a better champion in the cast to deal with it. Well, who do you think is going to win back at home in IP? Do they have a chance to even it up, or will Na'Vi clean up this set, put it 2-0, and try to finish it off in the game three coming up after this? You know, I like the Vivian pick because it's potential. It's potential to do a lot of things, but it's also potential to get run down. I mean, you know, they are comparing Ruckus, like you mentioned, a fat Ruckus or Ruckus himself, versus a skinnier Ruckus, <laughs> which is Vivian. And in that way, they means, yes, they can be countered, but they can also counter each other. And they have a lot of damage and helpful to get through. Sapper rounds most likely what we'll see because of the shielding. And it's Phoenix, mm -hmm. who is not flexing onto Leon, although he loves her, but that's creative's job today. And Phoenix will be on the sack around to Vivian. A lot of pressure, I think, on creatives and Mutu to perform this game in particular. Obviously, Diggy popped off last game. That was almost... It may still be a record-setting amount of killing blows. It might be. That wasn't even a 20-plus a minute game either. That was just one hell of a game from Diggy Dog. And anytime that happens, you know, people on your team are going to look like they did worse than they may be did in the end of the day. That's a very oppressive composition to fight wow. into. Look at that. Phoenix, no problems dealing with the shields. And it's only getting worse. Let's take a look at the loadout, too, and see what he's running. I'm sure one step ahead is included, but he's also getting ammunition for. And scapegoat, contingency, and unfair advantage. Really good cards as well to just be able to not only survive a little bit longer, throw some of that damage onto your shield. That's what scapegoat's for. But heal through runic ammunition. All the shields that come up are all the shields that are keeping That's him crazy. nice and healthy. Dude, he's like six tapping that shield. It's nutty. I mean, he's just shredding it. We'll get to it. We'll get to that. The bop, bop, bop. That Vivian casting. And Phoenix, I, you know, I love a man that just hit fires on Vivian. I hate ADSing on Vivian. I don't think it looks clean. I don't think it helps you much. I think your accuracy is, is just fine with the hip fire as well. 60 40, a little bit more skewed, about 1% more Finally. than game number one. And uh, a very slow going first point here. Nobody over 50% almost two minutes into the round. And the problem was, you know what? I think that he just did not have his firebomb in that one moment. And that's when Navi looked to press. And that's the benefit. Bird here trying to fight against Phoenix, but that is a losing battle, my friend. One step ahead with some swift spirits. I'll take it. Not as sincere here in con control, in the lead, and looking to grab objective number one. No problem. Phoenix in the autopilot with a Vivian. Quick little dismounts here, and then no further risks taken. Ruckus, I don't know how the hell he got back there. But Bonker is uh, dead on arrival to the objective. Navi grabbed the first payload of the game. This is the NIP map pick. Just as NIP gave Navi a run on Stone Keep, Navi looks like they're going to give NIP a run on their map pick. Giving the quality of support, Maldamba, to the quality of player. Pretty much no one in the world that, I mean, at this point, you look just to, just God, statistically look pilots it better. Uh, you're just so much uh, dynamic to your team, and 
Phoenix here just unstoppable on the what I may say is probably one of her, if not no guarantee, yeah, her yeah. best skin. It is really, really special. I mean, this performance is just walking it down mid. He was all by himself. He didn't have a teammate with an earshot of that, and he just walked down almost two members of NIP straight up. And that's what that's what I was wondering. I was like, did NIP account for that when they went for this triple, not only triple frontline, but three shielding based frontliners? Now, Vivian is not something Avi pull out a ton. Fnatic have done it a couple times, but Vivian has not been. She's good, man. You know, e even really a fringe pick to say. I'd say I've only seen her maybe once or twice all split. I think there's just so many opportunities because of the way that, like, the Master of Arms style of thing that Vivian has at a 60% level you can have in your loadout works in Paladins where it works on shields. I mean, and now with the Runic Ammunition healing on shields and just sap around, she, she just brings so much that just works so well without you trying very hard to work it. And good aim will be your result, uh, your resulting success level pretty much with Vivian. And that's something that we know Phoenix and all of these guys have. He's a Tyra guy. Maybe that's why he doesn't ADS. Maybe he, he got can't mad. Tyra. He's not used to it at all. He just doesn't need it. It kind of looks like he's playing Tyra in a, in a way. It could be a Tyra skin. And uh, Phoenix has fooled himself <laughs> into performing very highly. But I don't know. Tyra's in this game, man. She's going to see him cheat. She's going to see him cheating. And then that is going to be a long ride home. Not whatever, what I want to be. Whatever a part it of. takes, I guess. <laughs> Phoenix, whatever he needs to do to win. Talk whatever about that beautiful uh, disengage there just to stay alive for Mutu. I mean, that was incredible. Rounds the corner, knocks him back, and now he's all up in the action. Is this an exaction, Cassie? I'm not sure. Because the arrow, does it always it glow? It, it, or is that only with exaction? Bonus. Does it have I think that it's. Glow? I think it. It will. It will glow on bonus damage. And so uh, that's the exaction bonus damage number, though. Eight eighty four. That number will change if you're running something like big game. But yeah, he's just going for the dashes, the the rolls, and Hexafire here. It's probably going to be enough. I mean, but Lazy says, not really. You mm. thought you killed me, but I'm an so arc. Did you forget? <laughs> he got that heal, man. It was just so, so close. Maybe pulled off the target a little bit too soon. And one heal comes through on a Lazy, and it's all over at that point. But so much speed right here. He's going to get this Maldamba heal, and then just go ripping Swift around this spirits. corner. Walking down Ruckus, nearly walks down Barrack. The only reason that Barrack lived is because Bird came ripping out of spawn to keep him alive. It is a really rough round for Cruncy, who is playing this Fernando and having to deal with going to this back line where there's just so much damage and there's really no one making mistakes on the side of Navi. This this triple DPS has been essentially built to counter the exact triple front line that NIP have kind of gathered. Yeah, man. And so they're trying to do their best, but again, Bird has been very, very adamant about the fact that it is a strategy. He knows what he's doing. These guys know what they're doing, and they will lose three rounds in a row to have a chance to win round four. But if anything, triple, tri triple front line is one of the hardest falling off compositions in the game because your shielding just doesn't buy you as much time. Your healing just isn't coming through like it was in the first couple of rounds. And granted, there's not a lot of cauterize on Navi. They all went for Yikes. Wrecker. But you have things like kinetics that are going to be helping. You have death and taxes. It feels like Navi just have all their bases covered in this draft. And I think if you just take the death and taxes away, maybe it's a little bit of a different thing. If you Definitely. take the Vivian away, maybe it's a different thing. If you know you don't have a Nara and Damba, and you're forcing maybe an off support for that. But there's just there's too much healing on the side, and uh, they're doing it the way I like. Which uh, you get a Ruckus, you get a Barrack, so you have kind of damage dealing front lines, but. The sustain is just hurting, and they're losing Diggy so early. Yeah, Diggy who? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Huh? What a what a I think I've never I don't think we've ever seen a more dramatic transition <laughs> of performance from the absolute best thing we've ever seen to the absolute quietest game we've ever seen. You said his name, and I like looked up at their comp, and I was like, wait. Who is he? <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, he's Tyra, right. I, I, I honestly, in my head, thought it was Bonker almost all game. I've almost said Bonker a couple times when Tyra comes on screen. It's not something often run by NIP. Took a bit of risk with this triple frontline composition. Navi seem to have just properly navigated their way around it, man. I don't know how else to put it. And it seems like it's going to be a smooth sailing from now on. 3-0 in Navi's favor. NIP now have a very tough task ahead of them. That's going to get three points in a row, but it starts with a defense. So that's what you need to work out. But the Wreckers, oh, they're spilling through. Cruncy, I think, without a kill yet. Bonker dies to creatives. There's the illusory riff from Bird, but it feels like um, an exercise in futility against the anti-heal and the consistent damage pressure that creatives is applying. 
hand. Sucks to have this happen on your map pick as well, but NIP will get the next one. As we're going in loser's pick. Couple quick headshots. Creative says not to do much. Not a great slash line here. He's just trying to apply anti-heal. Very utilitarian pick. If that's even the right word for this situation. On Leon. Mutu's done pretty well on this exaction, Cassie. We can see Roll Cassie come back. I'm I'm more than happy. I'm yeah. arms wide open for that. Arms wide open, huh? I mean he's definitely got the credit boons here to make those Kronoses happen. If he has even invested in that. We could take a little look at the items here. There's a seismic crash though. And it does look like uh, Mutu's gone for the morale boost instead. <laughs> not the usual Cassie pick. He probably figured I'm not coming back to base for the rest of this round. Yeah, let me grab something. I'm just going to spend all of my money. Creatives will even up his slash line, if not go positive there, right at the end. Beautiful way to capstone the game. Navi just crush NIP under their heel with a very, very good draft that countered that triple front line. Stupid hard. Yeah, and, and uh, Androxus unpicked, unbanned. You figure probably would have rather had something like that heading against maybe uh, uh, a Leon or a Cassie, you know, maybe put Bonker there. I mean, that's a pretty decent flex for him but uh overall doesn't really work out we've seen this happen this is why the triple front line has constantly been criticized whenever it doesn't work because it really fails pretty hard uh when it does fail but when it succeeds obviously it gets you the wins and everyone remembers the bad times not necessarily the good times creatives though he played lights out came alive i like the i like Mutu as well though i think there's a good amount of just Punching the shield down from Vivian, you could see Phoenix play pretty safe the majority of that game. Yeah. Except when he walked down two people at the NIP spawn. But there is a lot of Mutu rolling around in these clips, right? He's getting involved. He was like 12 and 6 in this game. Everyone's, I think, so distracted with what's going on with his Vivian. She is so loud, so in your face, mm. that Mutu can just kind of quietly move around in the back line here, pick up his kills. You could see him at the spawn door at the end of the game, kind of like, hey, hey, what's up? So, you know, uh, and six, by the way. <laughs> we do have to say that Lazy had a really nice hold at the end there. And uh, complimenting Lazy ults, uh, you know, hasn't happened in the, in the history of college That's true. very often. But I do want to give him some congratulations <laughs> there. Beautiful seismic crash. It's been crash. a while, man, since he goofed one. I mean, you can't miss Dome Shield. And <laughs> seismic crash, you could definitely miss. He seismic crash perfectly set up creators for that triple kill we just saw. So that was, and that closed out the game. So great decision making. Leaf turned, great execution. Man. Leaf turned. Just need a new roster. New roll. New roll. Same Bright March, though. Same bands out of the gate here for Na'Vi. Same bands for NIP. We'll see if the Torvald will make it all equalized from game two. They will switch it up to the con. Maybe looking to bait NIP into said Torvald a little bit. Bring it out the big guy. Now NIP will grab the ruckus here. Didn't work out too well for them last round, but I don't know if we will expect another triple front line. And, I mean, here's the thing. Navi get Inara, and you're right. They're playing into the box. But the box keeps working, and NIP, you know, maybe right. just, <laughs> you know, sure so it, does. it just keeps working. It just keeps working. Yeah, and uh, what I, you know, what you can say about Ruckus is that it's it's very rare that I feel he was the he was the problem. Mm -hmm. I say I think Cassie fits in that box. I think Inara is pretty close to that barrel as well, where they are very rarely um, a, a negative thing, a chance taken or a gamble on those champions. They're pretty solid for most scenarios, uh, as long as the map kind of allows for them. Navi, bit of a different composition this time around. Could finish out with the the Torvald. Andro here. They still need their healer NIP. I don't know if they're going to go for that combo anymore. They will go back to the triple front line, and Navi could just pull off the Vivian again. It's not Fernando, it's Ash. It's still a shielding frontliner. Well, I mean, I think you could see how life has happened in the past, right? You see this happens, and Navi smash them. They do it again, and then all of a sudden you say, you could have picked Andro. It doesn't happen. Navi smashed them here, and it's like, well, we had this idea. The triple front line still good. You don't know anything that you're talking about. And really, you know, I'm not going to say I know anything that I'm talking about or why. I'm just going to say that didn't work last game. They go for it again. Maybe it'll work this time. They do have the Leon. Think yeah. about that. So it's that's a different composition for sure. There is that Leon taken away, so a lot of an anti-heal gone now. And we were wondering if just one little piece was taken away from Navi. They had so much inbuilt anti-shield. They had so much inbuilt anti-heal as well. They had everything. This game is a little bit different. They have the Andro as well, so it's not the triple DPS against the triple front line. Maybe NIP are onto something. Where was the success? The success, though, it was really just the blaster player 
in Diggy Dog, and he's had to flex on the hit scan, and that's no problem um, with the Tyra, and now most likely with the Leon, but you had a lot of success with that original composition on Navi's map, and that's because Diggy Dog is one of the, if not the best blaster player in this world of Paladins, and so that's something that you're not able to get for him in the draft, and it's rough, because they're banned out. Navi getting a lot of things that they've shown they love. Mutu with the heads will roll Androxus. Oh no. Somebody better not get flicked into the Shadow Realm. Hmm. Is he, does he play Abyssal Touch? Is it pretty much everyone at this point? Uh, everyone, I think, at this point. But he's, he's actually gone back to the similarities. This is what Perdo was running. <laughs> Listen, boy, the old school Andrew. This is just, what Perdo was They don't want to let go of the know. old way. I gotta say, I still have that muscle memory where I'll hit a, I'll hit a reversal and then just like turn into Ugh. California Ugh. and like try and dash and die. My legs, yeah, they don't work. I'm still trying to get my, uh, get my head around it. I do like the new build though. I think Andrew is a lot of fun and boy, ringy ding ding. Man, look at him. Okay, fearless. Misses it though, but still very fearless. Oh my gosh, Koa, hello. And uh, you took slug shot, so you can't hit him anymore. That's a bummer. Mutu comes back and says, I can hit you. I can hit you. Double kill for Andro. And yeah, it was the last pick. Nobody wanted it. I, I, I can see why. Not very good. Definitely not on right, Marsh. <laughs> He's looking good, though, man. Out of the gate. 100 to 0 capture for Navi. Creatives and Mutu. Can often go uh, unnoticed. We talk a lot about Phoenix because he is. Sort of that flex. He's going to be taking the, um, you know, the fining picks, so to speak, in these compositions, whether it's that turbo aggressive front line or whether it is, you know, that third DPS, that Vivian, that tire or something we haven't seen a lot. So we, we often pay a lot of attention to him. Yeah. It's easy to forget about how important Lazy can be with those seismic crashes set up, how important those Dread Serpents, those stuns from Spunky can be, and then the good old-fashioned headshots from Mutu. Feels like this wasn't, this was like, uh, this feels like, you know, a research study, right? And I feel like that's what we did expect NIP and Navi to do a little bit. You know, this set means not really much as far as qualifying, but it does, uh, you know, give them some information. And I think I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to put a positive spin on this game for NIP. You know, a lot of NIP fans who want them to beat Navi uh, today, it doesn't look very good right now. And again, these triple front line doesn't seem to be the, uh, um, the way to deal with this box. But you get information about the box, you know, because maybe this was a way to deal with the box, you know, maybe it was the Nando, maybe it was the Ash, maybe it was something, you know, the Leon that they had instead, now you have it, maybe that's it. And you're finding out it's not, and I think that's a really big important thing heading into Worlds. And what can be so difficult about these situations is you have to not only get your new things, but you have to make it a, you know, a controlled environment, right? You have to perform every right. single draft you get, everything you try, you, you have to be able to discern whether, um, did this fail because we were sucking or did yeah. this fail because it is going to fail in this scenario? So that's definitely something to keep I, in mind here. And that's what's so tough to crack about Navi. I think it's also true. And this, this is, uh, I think unequivocally true through what we've seen this year that in vocal, don't matter how good you are, you'll lose the game, but Androxus will go 29 and 4. Uh, you'll see Mutu uh, and with Androxus and go 30 and 5. You'll see Bittner with Androxus and go 28 and 6. So it doesn't matter uh, sometimes because Androxus against any team with the right player can get 30 kills on you. And that may be the difference right there. So they, like you said, Nick, the control kind of got thrown off here because this may just be Mutu popping off that results in. A really good a job for Navi. Six, five, four, knowing, knowing, knowing. That's why comfort two, picks are a thing. I mean, something that you know you will perform on every single time. Something on paper might be the best for the situation. But if your awareness on it, Woo. the little intricacies, the thing that makes Paladins kind of so special, if you don't have all of that on every champion that you're pulling out, you're not going to find a home here in the PPL. 0-5 start. For the Dogster, 9-1 start. That's crazy. 7-1 start for Mutu and Phoenix. Crazy stuff out of the gate from Navi. Yeah, and so Diggy Dog 0-5, that's odd, but is, is that be because of this Androxus? Well, I'd say it definitely has something to do with it. He's got 7 kills, and uh, Phoenix has 9. That's a lot for a Fernando. That is a lot. 0-14 here, perfect slash line for Spunky. And the man thinks Agent. the game's over here. He's going into deft hands. <laughs> he thinks it's all ogre. Oh, man. 
a little bit of a style. And also, you know, if there's a champion, you can really say... The most value for Deft Hands value. is on Maldaba because he has the longest reload in the game. And that reload, Technically. That reload serves... Not condoning it, but... That reload serves a big impact, giving him a stun that could change the tide of a fight, as we've seen many, many times. Mutu finds Cruncy there. And Phoenix here. We've been talking a little bit about him, but Koa finds Phoenix, and now where's Mutu at? Uh, I know this duel is happening, but missed enlightenment there. And Mutu finds another kill. He goes into the reversal. And there's Diggy Dog around the side. He had zero kills and now suddenly starts to turn it up. So NIP having an answer for what Navi have put together. and Maybe getting a little bit more information about the size of the box. Fairly staggered kills come out as well. Spunky lands his Dread Serpent, but doesn't get a lot of follow-up damage on Nakoa as well. No ultimate Oof. for Diggy. Remember, he wasted it. That allows Mutu to come back in. Here comes the Dome Shield. Couple of quick shots from Mutu, but Bird is so quick oh my. on the trigger here. He's dancing around with Ying. He buys enough time, honestly, I feel like, for K. Cruncy to make the rotation and deal with Mutu and stop the bleeding there. That was great from Bird. I mean, he definitely great. just delayed what he needed to. And there's a beautiful cleanup here. Cruncy makes all the right moves. And I think Lazy's going to go down. NIP have done what they needed to oh. survive. But Phoenix, <laughs> you were just hoping Phoenix Bruh. wouldn't see him on that other side, but he Bruh. does. And now Spunky <laughs> is up. Can he make it back in time? He needs a Gord, and oh, Bonker finds a beautiful kill on the Barrack. NIP trying to turn it around. Spunky may have to slither in, but there's Mutu back. He throws the reversal. He's using it as a shield. Perfect. Beautiful play from Bonker. Turns him around and hits him one with a blunderbuss to the top of the head. And NIP grab the first objective here on Bright Marsh. Target prioritization. That was the key there for NIP. K Cruncy especially. He makes a critical rotation around to slay Mutu. Comes right back to the objective, but doesn't get tunneled on Lazy. Heads to the back line there. Deals with creatives on Cassie. Ends up losing his life anyway, but trading for two for one, that's exactly what NIP needed. Getting the support as well. Spunky's had so many moments of undying, but he's forced to use that Dread Serpent real early in that fight for as long as it lasts. I'm sure he wished maybe he had saved it, but again, if you didn't even use it, maybe the fight would have been over sooner than later. Got to give credit to Diggy Dog for showing up in that objective fight. And NIP probably having comms in themselves saying, guys, you know, it was probably just the execution in that first round. I mean... We let Phoenix get nine kills as a Fernando. That's not really usual. And that is avoidable. Hopefully. Wreckers and Cots for both sides coming on, so frontliners have to adjust to how aggressive they were able to be in the first round. Phoenix being dropped low here. Shield's still pretty healthy. You can see the two separate health bars, but now both are low. One is gone entirely. Phoenix playing with the corner here. He will make it out just fine. Mutu. Kind of sneak into the back line here, but <laughs> Cruncy, he sees that Hexafire, and Cruncy's like, huh? 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 Where? Huh? Oh, there he is. Who's a good boy? Mutu here just playing the flank perfectly, man. But he somehow just steps in the line of fire, and I think Nadas Vincere realized that they've been bested here in NIP just like that. Go from finding out a little bit more about this box to stepping on in. Disrespect, shoes still on the carpet. Navi, yet to say, take him off, put him in the corner. And this is a big round for Cruncy there. I want to give a lot of credit to Bird, though, just for being able to dance with Mutu for as long as he did, because that was a slow rotation. I mean, he, he chunked his way. He ruckused his way over there, got it done, and Mutu's back was still turned to him, thankfully, when Cruncy arrived. Then he comes back, and that's when I, you know, that moment happened where he, he leaves Lazy on the objective and takes down the Cassie instead. And then the Hexfire at the end, you know, buys a lot of zoning pressure, kind of scatters Navi to the winds a little bit there. That was a big round for Cruncy all around. You know, uh, Nick, 9-1 uh, and one was Phoenix. He's now 10-5. and five. That oh, last round was 1-4 and four versus a 9-1. and one. What a turnaround. Times change. And this is what they were expecting, and I think this is what gave NIP confidence to perform, saying that's just odd we let Phoenix run over us on this Fernando. <laughs> this front line 1v1 happening. Well, you know, they got <laughs> Fernando, so he's going to get his 9 kills, so we got to worry about, uh, you know, how do we handle this? Andrew? It's like, no, that shouldn't be happening, and you know that. Mutu there goes in the back line, Ooh. and a Dread Serpent just to buy the time so the Enlightenment couldn't come off. Hey. Mutu now right into the back line, but the Blunderbuss and the turrets helped to clean him up with the help of Ruckus and the miniguns. There it is, 40% on the Hex of Fire, so not a factor in this fight. Spunky misses that stun. On to Ruckus. Emitter's up as well. Phoenix trying to rebuy the space that they just lost. Illusory Rift comes oh, out, no. but the anti-heal is enough. Fernando and Cassie combining to be a very dangerous duo. Phoenix can't get his big head 
under that pedestal. Diggy is going to clip him, but not kill him. And look at this, just using the time that they bought with that Phoenix play onto Diggy Dog to just secure this objective. And I've never seen a sadder frontline moment than Barrick attempting against Na'Vi to try and touch the point after they've lost it and zoned him away. I mean, the man just disapparates. It's not fair. And Na'Vi now 3-2 to two with a beautiful Scorch Fernando, Fernando Fireball. Look to close out this game and close out this set. Dome Shield is all that they have to resist with as well. So if Navi get this push done quickly, granted they don't have any ultimates either, not yet. What a reversal. It will Close. land. And the dashes that never were as Bonker is able to land the killing blow. Dancing with Spunky now. Healing comes through. Now he can get aggressive. Oh, one shot misses there, but it's all gravy, baby. Diggy Dog picks up two. The push won't happen quickly, so the ultimate economy will be drastically different by the time that this fight actually happens. As you can see, NIP now 100% on the Assert Dominance, 97 on Hexafire, 70 on Enlightenment, and Illusory Rift, pretty much the fastest charging ultimate in the game at 60. Fireball misses. Phoenix actually going for Bird in the back line behind Diggy Dog to his left. Look at Lazy. The back door is possible. Lazy on the Inara. I don't think they see him. I don't think they see Inara. No. Nope. Is that payload moving? It is. They're not there. They might be realizing it now, but it's a little late. We're not even looking at an R. Cameraman's confused. We're calling it out, but he doesn't realize in the back line there is a Stagala pushing this point. And now they are all starting to realize that Lazy has been there and he is here to stay. Try to take him down. He's almost 1v1 Koa in the process. <laughs> How are you going to do your old team like that, Lazy? <laughs> Come on. And I mean, if realistically, if this pale was up at that final choke instead of that little baby mini choke, that might have been it. That might have been it. That wall goes up, that blocks off a couple of people. He almost made it from choke to choke by himself. It's about the same distance from this choke to the end point. And Lazy, not only do, uh, does so much, moves the payload A, but it forces NIP to give up all of that aggressive, albeit good it map positioning. Them up, right? Had they slowed everyone down, they would have been in a good spot to take that fight. But they had no choice but to sign of run on the back foot, and you're not you know, doing a lot of damage in that type of fight. Oh my god! Combo. Seismic crash! That's the lazy ult of new, ladies and gentlemen. A double kill. Excellence from the Inara. Na'Vi has never looked better, and they are on the road to another world championship. Nobody can stop them. And Damn. that's a victory 3-0 over the Ninjas. Great synergy between that Fernando Fantastic. and that Anara skin I saw at the end there. That was actually like kind of risky when you think about it. They did both Dread Serpent and Seismic Crash up to that back line. That's like all of their control. And it ended up being enough damage to get a couple of kills there. But going for some, some high-flying acrobatics, I guess you could say, at the end. <laughs> and a great kind of uh, full circle uh, realization here of, of Lazy's progression in play, I think. And to see that ultimate hit and to slay Bird and, you know, just against the triple front line that he's just hated so much for most of his <laughs> life. And I think it's just a great uh, kind of... Uh, I hate <laughs> it! I hate everything you are! <laughs> <laughs> and just ends up finding the beautiful kill. Great game all around. Triple front line loses twice. The first game with the Willow Torvald was fantastic, but it was banned ever since for NIP. Navi have a, sl a slow start, but continue on with their dominance, and they go flawless here. Uh, in this PPL season, continuing their just road to continuous dominance. So much damage from the Navi front line as well. Seven and six, 13 and seven when it's all said and done. 17 and nine for Mutu, lighten up the kill feed. That old school loadout to boot. You just wonder, you just wonder how much of, of the Androxus, which is very much so a ban, almost in the place of a Willow or a Drogos, could exist in that uh, form if, if that's the difference, right? But we're running out of things to ban. I mean, once Dredge comes in for HRX, you're just, you're going to have to deal with something. I mean, Drogos, Willow, Andro, Khan, Torvald, Makoa, they cannot ban them all. And so yeah. we're going to have to see what they let through, what becomes the top dog, and what becomes uh, something they're at least willing to settle with as far as their picks. The Dredge and our relationship is going to be very interesting. The Dredge everybody relationship is going to be interesting. <laughs> okay. He's going to deal. I mean, he, he just puts out so much more damage than like a Willow would. And that's the closest sort of like in hand champion that I think he resembles. I mean, you start just like yeeting out broadsides like there's no tomorrow on the objective. And the dust will settle, and there will be nothing there once it does. 7 and 0 oh for Nottis Fincier here. NIP 5 and 3. Fnatic 5 and 3 as well, but NIP with the map lead, and the results being similar will still stay in second place looking for that qualification. That was it 
for NIP, ladies and gentlemen. Fan, uh, fantastic for them. Uh, Lazy is your MVP. He finds redemption. Lazy's really been having a good season, so it's not yeah. really much redemption to be found. Certainly. What a Maybe in that role, photograph, though. though. What a different role for him, though, coming off of like the hyper carry roles. Now playing the point front line. He never leaves the objective. Stay calm. I'm Stay not going to do it. Stay calm. We're almost there. We're almost home. Ignore it for now. So, uh, do your plug. You're super good at it. I'll keep your mind off this song. <laughs> well, uh, HRX is around the corner, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Higher as X. With gusto. It's going like to be the song. place that you want to be. You want to dance. You want to potty. You want to chill. You want to drink. Drink a hot what? toddy. <laughs> Go ahead and hang out at the after party. High Res Expo, hrxafterparty.eventbrite.com. Main event entertainment, November 18th, the last day of the HRX Finals. You'll be seeing a crowned High Res Expo Paladins World Championship, I guess, winner. And uh, you'll be able to party with them and hopefully all the other pro players that you're interested in seeing. We got Gather Round coming up, so don't go anywhere. We'll be bouncing our ways over to the uh, old desk right now. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the roundtable for the post-game gather round. Today's PPL went by actually a little faster than I thought it was going to as far as things are concerned, although maybe not fast enough for some mm. people. Rain Day <laughs> is over yeah. here. And he looks pretty tired. I did both. You did both. You're beat. But you got to see four different teams today. And, uh, I mean, they looked pretty all right. If there's a 4-1 or a 5 uh, or a 3, if there's a 4, if there's a 3-1 or a 3-2, there is always a 3-0 accompanying it. Yeah. That's just how it operates with us. How are you feeling, Nick? I'm feeling good, man. I think, uh, especially in the first set, I feel like I learned a lot more. And that one, it, I don't expect anyone to remember. We were kind, we kind of set this matchup up um, to be pretty interesting, right, for the Fnatic VP matchup later in this yeah. week. Now that we've seen Mouse take him to five, we've seen VP do very well. And I was kind of watching that last game. I'm like, wow, this is Mouse's pick. They have a good draft. Four. They have a lot of strong, yeah, strong yeah. drafts. I mean, VP feel like they could dominate Fnatic on Thursday if they're oh, not careful. And so they gotcha. looked, that was Frog Isle, right? Like, so it starts out, you get a 4-3, a 4-3, and then 4-1-4-1. Like, it, it turns into an easier set for Virtus Pro. And you're saying, like, because Frog Isle went so, like, swimmingly well, essentially, mm -hmm. that Fnatic is maybe shaking a little in their boots for the later week having to Certainly. face Virtus Pro. Yeah, I mean, they're trying to win. Trying to find their... Their mojo. It's like Austin Powers. They've <laughs> lost it, and uh, they I are need to on, watch those movies again. They're on a mission to find it, and you know they haven't found it yet. But I mean, Austin finds it. So if that bodes well, I think we'll see Fnatic eventually get theirs. So there are two things on here that I think go hand in hand. One of them you had written down that was rookie of the split, which is I feel like something that might be going to Virtus Pro's way. But also, I wanted to look kind of like the rookie duo. The Can fact you count that, Diggy as a rookie, technically, <laughs> I guess? I kind of forgot about Diggy. I mean, he's technically a rookie. In the PP, he's a PPL I mean, rookie. Yeah, he's tec like, technically he is. And technically correct is the best kind of correct for bureaucrats. <laughs> so you technically never know. correct is the best kind of correct. Are you asking who well, is... I guess who would you give rookie of the split? We can't do it. Yeah, we'll do that on Friday. We'll yeah. do that on Friday. Yeah. We'll okay. do that on Friday. No, it should, even, it should to, be next. But start it should thinking. be Esports Weekly. Esports on Weekly. Monday. Yeah, we'll do that. I would still say though, looking at like the rookie duo, I guess coming down from Virtus Pro, the fact that they picked up Nino, they picked up Serrats, which are names that have been around in the PGS. They've been mm -hmm. kind of again like flirting with the PPL, but they never fully made it, and I feel like disappeared from the PGS for a little while there. But they are looking just dominable like they are so good in yeah. this set and so far for what they've been able to provide for vp i think you know look at diggy though and uh like look at the way he just gets like bubble botted in that first game and that's where like he has that pop-off performance i haven't ever seen that game for ninu where he is just like everything is about him it's about him carrying the game and being successful on that comp <laughs> Um, I keep thinking about the VP's game with Fnatic like two weeks ago at this point mm. on Frozen Gar when Nino's playing Zin, Elven Pass being pocketed by the healer, and I can't remember the rest of the comp, but somebody else is just getting, you know, bubble botted essentially. And he's like by himself on this Zin on Frozen Guard. I, I think he was playing like Guillotine or Yomi or something. And like he was still being, like he was still killing. I was like, man, look at him go. Nino has probably the most different games on diff the most games on different champions uh, almost out of anybody in this split maybe 
because Bugsy's not even flexing that much. Maybe, maybe out of the entire split in Europe. He has played four different champions today. Yeah. You're telling me on Zen, that's five already. I mean, the, the amount of times yeah. we see multiple, like, Mutu and Creatives flex onto a pool of five champions, very, very slow, like low. Rock Monkey, we don't see him flex on the mm -hmm. pool of five champions. Most people don't have it that deep, but he has the Barrican, which is the front line. He's able to yeah. go to the Leon, he goes to the Trogos. Uh, it's just an incredible, he goes to the Willow. It's an incredible kind of showcase of, I think, the overall caliber of player that he is. He knows Paladins, he knows all the characters, and he is, he is a high-level player performance-wise. Definitely something that you would want to keep your eye on going into future splits, like looking at not only here, but looking at LAN, looking towards the future for Virtus Pro. Do you think Ninu has been like the best pickup they could have gotten? Well, he's got to perform at LAN. You never know yeah. if it's the best. I mean, you still have a guy like uh, Simsalu who is a proven LAN performer, but of course, Elven Path is just done with him and dusted, cut off the bloodline. And so I, I think, you know, there's really... I don't know who else I would pick, but there's going to be a lot of guys who earn their keep at LAN this year and are going to be in the PPL next year. Well, that set, I feel like going Virtus Pro's ways was pretty expected overall. Mouse has looked good. They've been able to get some good games. They actually had, I think, a great performance today, but it's still not been enough to get them a first win, even though they've been able to get these map wins. But the second set, game one had a lot more going for it than games two, game three. Game one, <laughs> well, there were two things that I picked out of it that I wanted to ask about. And the first one, because it was the first time that we've seen it in a long time, Shaolin, you had talked about it on the desk beforehand. I can't believe they actually picked it. Was it hot or was it not? It was hot. It just Hard was slow to, to start. I think it was slow, slow. And I don't even know if Explosive Arrow was like, you know, sometimes you're playing Paladins, you're like, oh, crap, I'm starting in five seconds. So pick a talent, <laughs> pick a thing, you know. It didn't feel like he really was maximizing Explosive Arrow for any strategic reason. I feel like he could have played the exact same way. Probably would have been better for Mutu's yeah. style of play to just be firing yeah, faster. If I don't know. I feel like him, he was playing like he had Desert Shadow. I mean, he's like taking his horse all the way to the back line at the start of almost right. every round. Like, he's almost constantly flanking. And that makes kind of sense given who Mutu is and what has been meta for Shaolin in the past. And I, I stand by the fact that Diggy just kind of dem commanded everything in that game. It's hard to say, like, who truly had a bad game and who just got steamrolled over by Diggy Dog. But for the reason I, I like it is because it's a tertiary or secondary low-tier damage pick that is valuable. And it's it does fill a different role against certain shield comps, certain things like that, yeah. that, like, Talus doesn't, right? And especially long-range compatibility. That's the, thing, that's the thing Shaolin has that we forget about. A thousand damage from anywhere on the map. That is a big yeah. deal, and it scales incredibly well with Wrecker. And, uh, you know, it's a guy that I think, again, we're going to see more of at HRX, but it's cool to see him today. Well, it looked really cool, and it's nice seeing him just because I think he, like you said, it's kind of a little bit more LAN-oriented, I would yeah. say. Yeah. But it is one of those things that being able to reach a little further into your pocket, especially for some teams like Navi, like, that's what you need going towards HRX is being able to pull those out, find success with them. Although it's hard to say I think anything found success in that game more than, like, Diggy Dog. <laughs> because Diggy Dog, I mean, you had said he's kind of bubble bot everyone's, like, just keep him alive, keep him going. But the man was insane. I think the one time I looked up, he was 27 and 8 or something like that. I mean, he was batting a great KD through this game. I wish he could have. You know, like, when records get broken, when I'm, like, the one watching a record get broken, I hope that it gets blown out of the water so that I can always say, like, I was there when, I this, was there. when this was a thing. <laughs> he had 38 going into the last round, and then NIP was dead silent on that team fight, dude. He didn't get a didn't single get a chance. kill. He didn't get a chance at the end. I mean, he, he they switched it up because I think they wanted to just try to catch Navi off guard, but Spunky was ready with that Dread Serpent. It's too quick. That's just the top tier support. That's the reason why he is who he is. Looked incredible, but it wasn't incredible enough, I guess, from NIP. And I actually, I wrote this wrong. I wrote NIP of drawn the line. Navi drew a line today, I feel yeah. like. And that's where kind of things were. We were mentioning that everything, uh, I said it in the mouse VP set, where it's like, it feels kind of like a gradient in Europe, where it's just like everything's starting to blend together. These teams aren't defined as two, three, four, five. Two through five looks like it could kind of go either way. Obviously, two is still going to beat five, but most of those numbers, most of them don't matter anymore. It seems like any team in Europe, except for Na'Vi, could be thrown into a mosh pit and come out alive. But Na'Vi has drawn that line in the sand between them and everyone else and has confirmed themselves as number one yep. from Europe through HRX. So how are you feeling about their success, I guess, this split in the future? Man, it feels like it's it's a realistic possibility. They just they go back to back. Granted, you know, Worlds was not a full year ago, but they just feel like they've, they've nothing but improved this whole split. Yeah. And they've added Lazy as well, which has given them the right amount of challenge with the 
the smallest amount of like difficulty to take on that challenge. Because they added a top tier player who's been to almost every land in Paladin's history, knows all the guys, knows all the rhythm, and, and is able to just fit in perfectly and takes this frontline role upon himself to be an expert at stuff that we've really never seen him play much or played with uh, this more of like negative vibe to it when it was in this triple frontline that he then got to play against, which was just hilarious to me. That that ending with the seismic <laughs> crash was just such a like a moment. Like, and it I sucks. hate everything about triple frontline. <laughs> yes, finally. And I think Lazy's just such a as he's playing play. Inara every game every and never game. leaving the point. But he, at least, <laughs> at least he is. At least he's not being like a barrack saying like, "Go carry for us, barrack." When you know he's yeah. like, "I'd rather be on something else." This is the <laughs> moment. Gets bird as well. The former captain. I mean, there's it, it, a lot of moments uh, that I, I like in Paladins. But that Turn was that one damn of my sensitivity ones. down, man. You don't need that on Inara. <laughs> you don't need. You don't he need hits that. all his pellets, man. <laughs> He has all the pellets. Pellet god, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Navi are looking ridiculous. 7 and 0 right now. Yeah. Looking like they might make the 8 and 0 dream, which is big for them considering they've always been hey, wait, the ones like trying play to play week? upset. Did they play mouse? It might not have been updated. I can't remember if they play mouse. I didn't see them. I'm not sure. I, I mean, looked... they, they've already played Fnatic twice. Right, Fnatic played mouse. I know they played Thursday. They played VP. I Did they play VP? Just bring it up. They would have to. Maybe. I don't know. I can't remember. Because don't Fanatic play? Oh wait, no. Fnatic, Fnatic play, play VP. VP. Fnatic play VP. So yeah, I think <laughs> it's Navi header. Mouse. I think it's Navi Mouse. Navi and Mouse. Yep. Virtus Pro and Fnatic are the other matchup on Thursday. So one that yeah. is probably going to be a lot closer than the other. Navi and Mouse probably. Navi gets so, so cocky that they throw. <laughs> yeah, that's the call. Well, they're, so they're on this trajectory for eight and zero, and this is something we'll probably go into in more in depth they for get Sports Weekly. But I just want to ask. Curse Off the record. top of your head. They have to throw so they don't get the curse record. Ooh. Who's who's a team that. that can actually beat them? Like who's a team that could take them down in the future? Buh. Well. Buh. <laughs> They're Buh. sanguine now. I saw an Isoflorex. Isoflorex. Uh Buh, Big Egos, uh Ferocity, Isoflorex, Ryder. No. Honestly, I think SSG has a chance. Um you know, if you're talking about PGS teams, I think anybody in the top 2 PPL situation, G2 MV, um NIP could beat them. It just uh they were getting information about the box. That's how I'm going to say today. I'm going to put a positive spin on everything they've done. You know, an Evan of the past uh, with the rabies right next to him might, uh, you know, go in on these double, <laughs> these double, triple front line drafts. <laughs> but I think at this point I've matured and I'm realizing that they have an idea of what they're doing. Let's hopefully see that they glean information from that and then make different decisions because it clearly didn't work that way. But maybe they found something that really is going to help them uh, unlock the code. And again, it's, it's for HRX. That's what yeah. you need to know. And they will be your, your number two spot. So they've, they've secured that, wrapped it up. And that means NIP and Navi are going to definitely be seeing each other in the knockout rounds. Unless uh, Fnatic sort of reincarnate and put themselves back where they used to be, I don't know a team that can beat them right now. I think, you know, you look at Nocturnes from, from Last Worlds that got them close. And, you know, leading up to that event, we're talking about, you know, look at all these plays from Pule, from Sadat, from everyone. You can pick a name and you, you can point to a play, you can play a replay of like an incredible moment against a top tier team. You can do that with Navi, right? Every single time, something Spunky's doing, something Lazy's doing, something Mutu's doing. Everyone has like these moments that you can point to and say, that is just such an incredible team. It's mm. everyone. It's not one guy. Yeah. It's not even two or three guys. It's all five of them are just doing nut stuff on all their characters. So until somebody else can start bringing that to the table, it's, it's a hard conversation to have. Well, so far, I would say week five for the PPL has been... A little bit more, I guess, successful for some teams, not as successful. I think Mouse are really trying, or really wanted to try and try and find a win right here, right now, because going up against Navi isn't the best bet to try and pull in your final set. So potentially going winless on the other side, Navi potentially going undefeated, and Virtus Pro looking really good. NIP, maybe room to improve, but that was just day one of week five. We still have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, two days of North America, one more day of Europe for this week so make sure that you're tuning in 3 p.m every single day here on mixer or at live.skillshot.com whichever one that you prefer it's going to be perfect for you but that's been the round table that's been day one so we'll wait and talk to you tomorrow for north america day one for week five